Hello, you multi munition dumps. <laughs> Could more mention that. And thank to thank you to Marky Marks um, for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie in the Bothy, somewhere in the middle of yeah, the Irish Sea. I knew you knew. And I am here to provide you with an extras, 925 extras to be specific, in which I will be helping you in your journey in nailing down independent bottlings of Scotch whisky because no other spirit in the world has the benefit, and it is a benefit, it's not a nuisance, never a nuisance, it only ever has been a serious benefit to the reputation of Scotch single malt whisky to have independent bottlers on the scene that when times were tough and the distilleries weren't selling their whisky, they could sell casks to the independent bottlers who would have their own market and who would go out there one-to-one -one with their customers and sell them their own versions of official bottlings under an independent bottling title. And the fact is that Scotch whisky in particular is superbly well represented, far better than any other spirit in the world, with independent bottlers who are very diverse in the range of what they bottle, in the size of the company, in the prices they charge, that as well, and in literally making available some fascinating and really, really good quality permutations of a single malt signature, particularly when the official bottlers aren't doing such a good job. Yeah, you heard me. It happens. Seen big companies. You have more politics, more layers, more, more levels, more managers and more people who make big, big decisions that are very remote from the actual place where the whisky is made. With independent bottlers, it can be significantly different because independent bottlers are looking at a warehouse which they may lease space on a warehouse or have their own warehouse. And the casks that they have are basically their bread and butter livelihood and they cannot afford to make too many mistakes, otherwise they go under. There are over a hundred independent bottlers. Some have been and gone. Some have only just started. Many have been around quite a while. Some of them, like signatory Caden Heads and Gordon and MacPhail, bottle a huge variety of single malts and other spirits. This is quite important because you can get some really good rums, really good tequilas even, really good cognacs, very good calvados, other spirits from other countries. Because when you're in the drinks trade, it can become very cosmopolitan very quickly. Because you're, you're in that circle, you see. You're socialising in your work circle. And these big companies, they've also been very good in the past, and still to a certain extent, in presenting obscure distilleries as a bottling which have never appeared as official bottlings. Like Glenlochy, for example. Who's ever heard of Glenlochy? Um, well, Cadenhead had quite a number of bottles from them. But they're a thing of the past. And I distinctly remember many years ago going into, going into Cadenhead's in Edinburgh in the Royal Mile, bottom of the Royal Mile. Lovely, lovely characterful little shop. And you'd see up in the blackboard on the right hand side when you walked in the front door all the little tombstones beside the single cask bottlings that were doing representing the fact that the distillery was either mothballed or closed and demolished or even worse turned into blocks of residential flats. Rest in peace St Magdalen, rest in peace Little Mill. Two very good examples. And um, Within the independent bottlers, you have a tremendous diversity of bottlings. It depends how they warehouse their casks. It depends where they source their casks from. It depends what age they want to bottle their whiskey at. It depends what style of whiskey they want to put out there, whether it be um, second cask matured, so 
lighter and a bigger age. Get that a lot with Caden heads um, and signatory. Or whether they want to put an awful lot of attention into detail in, in manicuring, oh, excuse me, <laughs> cast strength Khalil. It's giving me the hiccups. I knew it would happen. Excuse me. Emergency in the bothy. Hmm. Independent bottlers. Some independent bottlers really manicure their casks. They really kind of watch them carefully. They get regular samples and it costs them money to do this. And then they assess and use their experience. Which direction is this cask going? Is it helping our whiskey or is it hindering? Do we need to recask or do we just leave it alone? Are we likely to be bottling in three years, six years, nine years, 12 years, 20 years? It's all noted down on the progress report in the individual file of each cask. And a company that does that very well in manicuring the cask is James Eady. I'm always on the lookout for their bottlings. It's an independent bottler I take very seriously and I've shared it with you. And you have new independent bottlers like Watt Whiskey are still finding their feet. They're putting out some really feisty, some dangerous bottlings. They're either going to be hit or miss, but they're honest in what they are and I commend them for it. So where do you go with your journey into independent bottlers? Um, I would recommend keep it simple to start with. Buy something straightforward from one of the big independent bottlers where the product's more widely available, more widely distributed and therefore more accessible, particularly if you're outside of Scotland and the UK. So you might say, well, I tell you what, Bunahaben is a good solid malt, um, so we'll go with one of those bottle of Bunahaben and there's various versions of their bottling they do the the low strength the medium and the cask strength and you buy a bottle and you think right I've got the official bottling here let's put them side by side and this is where you start doing your apprenticeship with independent bottlers seeing how they can be different in what way they're different how they reinterpret and represent the signature of a whiskey through the specific provenance of a single cask or a small batch. This is another thing about independent bottlers. Generally, they're always a lot smaller than your official bottlings, and therefore when you get a small batch from an independent bottler or a single cask, you're, you're getting something which is has more excused, I'm, I'm just gonna use the word anyway, more singularity to it. Because when you're batching over 12 casks at a time, um, which some independent bottlers, the larger ones do, you can hold on to the def definition and the singularity of the casks involved. They will have a little bit of a say in the blend of these single casks. As a single, not usually, but not always. But when it comes to official bottlings, you can have hundreds and occasionally thousands of casks go into a batch, particularly if it's going to be split up for domestic sale, export or whatever. And therefore, the singularity is lost and you get a generality. That's what you get, a generality of signature. And particularly with single cask, until you experience single cask whiskies, you just don't realise how singular the singleness can actually be. How diverse, how variable, not just in terms of flavour at a specific age, but in terms of intensity, in terms of the diversity and permutations of sensations, of expressiveness, of temperament, of signature, of aggressiveness, of passivity, all of this really only starts to become tangible when you're consuming 
over time, single cask whiskies. I was once in a warehouse, I was in Bladnick actually, and there are two identical sherry casks in which they had put identical spirit from one spirit run from the stills into the two casks and I was basically invited to just smell the casks and taste a tiny drop and what I immediately noticed was virtually identical casks with identical spirit flavours completely different. What was it? What was the cause? Um, the sherry was exactly the same so I suspect it was actually the source of the American oak wood used for making the sherry casks because people have no idea absolutely none until you start to really get into your whiskies just how diverse the flavor from American oak can be depending on where that oak has been harvested from. So if it's been harvested up the mountains, Orzac, whether it be from one cooperage who are specifically sourcing their wood from a specific supplier, or another cooperage who are more generalised accepting everything that's going, or whether a big corporate national that will take the cheapest American oak uh, on the absolute minimal budget that they possibly can. Hello, Jack Daniels. Yeah, I know. But hey, it's all old number seven needs. When you're buying your, your independent bottlings, you want to avoid the bad ones and you want to get the good ones. How do you do that? One, go to a specialist whiskey shop. You may pay a little bit more, but hopefully, fingers crossed, if the person behind the counter cares about their job and is actually looked after by their employer, they will be knowledgeable and know about what stock they've got. Bear in mind that they get little sample bottles when they buy in from independent bottlers. So they get to actually taste and try before you buy. So if they're into their whiskey and know about their bourbon and, all, and have knowledge about rum, a knowledgeable member of staff in a specialist whiskey shop is going to be absolutely essential to save you money and increase the return of the value of your experience. Another thing is to go online. Look at my reviews. Look at Serge Valentin's reviews at whiskeyfun.com. Go to whiskeybase.com. Go to dramface.com. Go to the prominent sites and go to other YouTubers as well. It's not just me and it's doing the videos. There's others as well. Go and do a cross section. Build up a wider picture. Do your investigations and your sleuthing work. Be a Miss Marple, be a Hercule Poirot, be a Sherlock Holmes and you'll notice things start to appear. You'll notice, hang about, see in this particular year Cadenheads seem to get some really good Kalila in. They've had a batch and they've started bottling at eight years old, then the nine year old, then the ten year old, and then the eleven year old and the twelve year old, all from the same purchased batch. So you'll have that reliability. Also, you could have something from another independent bottler where they put out one bourbon cask matured whiskey followed by a sherry cask matured whiskey and then followed by a bourbon cask matured whiskey and then another sherry cask matured whiskey. All from the same distillery and you happen to notice because you've checked out the reviews that the bourbon casks are weak and ineffective and the sherry casks are just amazing. You will see themes and patterns the closer you look at independent bottlers you will see oh, some independent bottlers are really strong in certain malts and rather weak in others, or rather weak in other spirits like rum. You'll build up this bigger picture. It doesn't happen overnight. You've got to do your independent bottling apprenticeship. And I am here to help you with your journey, because I'm Ralphie in the Bothy, and I hope you found this useful. In my next review, I'm going to be reviewing an absolute cracker of a single malt eye-wateringly good. A 90 plus, I'm not going to tell you what it is malt mates, you're just going to have to wait. It's an independent bottling too. 
very, very special. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to bring you and develop another little theme about independent bottlings to help you with your voyage of discovery, with your mock moments, with the growing complexity and demands of your malt mixologising. I'll start, I'll, that was a terrible word. Your malt matrixing, matrixing, that's it, your malt matrixing. I'm Ralphie from The Bothy. Hope you found this useful and helpful and all the rest of it. If you did, subscribe. Think about joining me on Patreon.com. I do have a channel called R-A-L-F-Y Ralphie. You'd be lovely to see you there. All you have to do is buy Ralphie a wee dram a month and you get extra videos, extra content and the live streams every second month. What more can you ask for? Mock moments magnified. Yeah.